So I think I can speak for all of us as anglers when I say we want to have success out there on the water. Whatever success looks like to you, whether it's catching one bass, 10 bass, 100 bass, or just making memories with your friends and family, we want to eliminate any possibility of not catching fish out there on the water. I don't care if you're a bass boat angler, john boat, kayak, or a bank fisherman, we want to plan our fishing days with success in mind. And a critical part of planning for fishing success is going to be planning around the weather. In my previous video, I talked about the worst day of the month to go bass fishing. And in this video, we're going to talk about which weather conditions present the best day of the month to go bass fishing. And let me tell you something, it might not be the weather conditions that you're thinking of. My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. How's it going everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers no matter where you live in the country and no matter what type of bass you target. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, advancing your bass fishing knowledge and skills, hit that subscribe button to join this channel. If y'all could, please stick out this video to the end because we have some incredible fish catches coming. Yes, two casts in a row, let's go. Oh my gosh. I am excited about this video today because it's a continuation of my previous video that I did talking about the worst day of bass fishing. This is gonna be a complete contrast with the best day of bass fishing. Now before we get into that, I gotta thank the sponsor of today's video, which is the Bass Forecast app. If y'all have followed my channel for any amount of time, you've seen the Bass Forecast carpet decal I have up there on the front of the boat and probably wondered what the heck is that app. Well what it is is an algorithm based fishing app that takes into account weather and water data that gives you a rating from 1 to 10 on how good the fish should be biting in your area based on GPS location. And you're probably thinking, Tyler, how in the heck does the app do that? And to be honest, I'm not even quite sure. I've seen the back end of the app and this algorithm is incredibly complex. The algorithm and app itself was built by a man named Mike Melman. He is an incredible analytical wizard. He's such a smart guy and it was helped by fishing guides all around Texas and myself and Alton Jones Jr. I'm telling you guys, this thing is crazy accurate. And the cool thing about the app is that it shows you a rating for I believe 10 days in the future. And so it really helps you plan out your fishing days like we're gonna talk about in this video. I trust Bass Forecast no matter where I am in the country and it helps me catch fish when I just can't figure them out. But now let's get into the juice of this video, which is the best weather conditions to go bass fishing in. And it's not exactly what you'd expect. So I think a lot of beginner anglers and maybe novice anglers out there, people that don't fish a whole lot, might look at the weather and look for the best possible weather day. So I'm talking sunny, 75, just a slight breeze and that is not always the best time to go bass fishing. One time of the year where sunny and 75 with no wind is perfect is going to be during the spawn. When those bass are moving up shallow to spawn, to mate, that is the weather you want. But the rest of the year, and of course a lot of this stuff's gonna be anecdotal in this video, it's gonna be a lot of my personal experience, but I've talked with a ton of pro anglers and a lot of fishing buddies across the country, and the one weather condition in which I have found the most active fish and some of the most fun fishing days of my life are when the weather is horrible. I'm talking nasty cold front coming in, high winds, heavy, heavy rain, lightning bolts flashing all around you. That is when I have found the best fishing conditions are. Now, of course, I don't mean fishing conditions as in you as an angler being comfortable. The sunny 75, hardly any wind, that's when you're the most comfortable as an angler. And so if success to you is going out there and just making memories with your friends and family, not really worrying about catching a whole lot of fish, that is the weather that you want. That is your best day of the month to go bass fishing. But let's just say you have one or two cold fronts or one or two big storms coming in every single month, uh, wherever you live in the country. I'm imploring you guys, you're going to see a ton of fish catches here at the end of the video where we had a cold front coming in. It had just been raining all night. I mean like heavy thunderstorms. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to go out there in the rain and try to catch some fish because I know that bass love changing weather. From everything we know scientifically about basically every species of animal out there is that they move when that barometric pressure changes. So I'm talking about a high pressure system coming in or a low pressure system coming in. When that pressure is changing, bass for some reason, I don't exactly know the biology behind it, but I just know from everything I've been taught in the bass fishing industry for my 15 years of bass fishing is that bass love to feed and move and become active when that weather is changing. And so here in a minute, y'all are going to see tons of fish catches on top water and a spinnerbait on a day that ordinarily I would want to sit inside. It was cold, it had just finished raining and some rain was on the way with a very high pressure system after that. And so the weather was changing all over the place and I knew 
I could stay inside and be comfortable, or I could go out there and have an awesome day of fishing. And I wish that I had a little more scientific basis for what I'm talking about in this video. I'm just giving anecdotal evidence in my own fishing experience that fishing gets really good when that weather gets really bad. Now, of course, it gets to a certain point where it just gets dangerous out there. So if you got a, a sleet storm coming in and it's 28 degrees outside, it's probably not safe for you as an angler to even be out there. But this video is here to encourage you that if you are faced with you know picking two different fishing days, you see a, a storm coming in and then nice sunny calm after that storm in my experience you should pick the stormy day not the calm day because the fish love to see that weather changing that's when they get active and they feed the most and of course you guys know I'm a storyteller I love to tell stories here on the channel and so I'm gonna share a story of what happened this past summer in Minnesota you know I went to the lake and I was expecting just a little bit of drizzle you know probably good fishing conditions a storm was coming in and I get to the lake and it starts pouring rain I mean I'm like cats and dogs outside not even weather that I could put a GoPro up and film I could run through one battery and then the battery would die. It was way too wet outside to even consider opening up the case to change the battery. That's how rainy it was. And so I thought to myself, I could go home, I could edit a video, or I could just sit in the truck and wait for the rain to pass. But I'm going to get out there because I think those fish are going to be incredibly active and feeding. And as soon as that rain stops, that bite could die down. It was, it was all kind of hypothetical in my mind, and so I made the decision, I'm gonna go out there, even though I'm not filming a video, and just have a good fishing day, make memories for me. That would be a success in my mind. So I went out there, and let me tell you, I had two and a half hours of the most incredible fishing of my life. It was like four pounder, four and a half pounder, four pounder, almost every cast for like two hours. It was incredible. But as soon as that rainy front passed through and the high pressure came, the clouds dissipated, that bite was instantly gone. And one other story from two summers ago, I was out there filming a video. I was so excited. We had cloud cover there. I really wanted to film an overcast topwater video. We get out there. I catch a five pound largemouth bass in Minnesota, which is a pretty big bass for up there on a topwater spook. And then we literally saw the cloud, which was that front move across the sky, bluebird conditions. That bite was deader than a doornail. So while it may seem totally counterintuitive when you're selecting your fishing days to pick the pre-storm, storm, prefrontal, storm, pre frontal conditions as opposed to the good weather to come in the future, I guarantee you it is more worth it for you as an angler and you're going to have more success fishing those days as opposed to the good days. So thank you all so much for watching this part of the video. I say we hop on the water and show you guys that exact day that I was talking about, the, the pre-storm, storm conditions when those fish were absolutely on the chew. It is an awesome day of bass fishing. Let's get out there. Oh, there's one. Right as it hit the water. Oh, that's awesome. Literally right as it hit the water. Bring it in here, buddy. I almost threw it in that guy's mouth. He was waiting for it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I flung you up here with a little too much vigor. Thank you, buddy. See ya. I just saw a fish bust. I just saw a fish bust right here. There's one. Let's go, baby. Oh, I had to slow roll it through there, and that's a nice one. That is a nice mucho grande one on the old buzz bait. Come on. Come on, Bubby. Bring it up in here. Let's go. Look at this chunk right here, folks. All right, there's three and a half pounds of buzz bait goodness. Oh, my gosh. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Beautiful, folks. Let's think and go. As I said, this is the prime time to go fishing. Whenever you get these conditions, oftentimes can result in bass like this. Okay, baby. Okay. Can we go two in a row? Two casts in a row, how about that? Come on. Yes, two casts in a row, let's go. Oh my gosh, that was almost a joke. I was not expecting to actually go two casts in a row. Holy cow, wow. Alrighty. Ho, 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 ho. Let's get you in this bank. Man, you're hard fighting. You are hard fighting. Oh, yes. Oh, baby. Look at that. Another fish. Almost cookie cutter size. That one's uh, under three. Beautiful. How about three in a row, maybe? I don't know. Why the heck not, baby? What? Oh, no, wait. It's three in a row. That's three in a row. This one is smaller, so... I'm gonna buzz this one in. We have found the absolute money hole, folks. 
That's three buzz bait fish in a row. As long as I keep casting and I keep catching, let's just keep doing it. Come on, four in a row? Not four in a row. Oh, what a run. There's one. There's one on the spinner bait. I knew there was more down there than the ones I was catching on the buzz bait. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, wow. That's a nice one. We're gonna go down here closer to the bank to lip this one. My goodness. You are a big chungus. You are a nice chungus. Oh my goodness, wow. Okay, hello. Hello, buddy. Oh, 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 oh my gosh, y'all. That is a certified five pounder. Oh my gosh. That thing is so stinking healthy. That thing is so stinking healthy. Look at the chunkiness of that. Holy cow, I gotta get an Instagram selfie. Alrighty, friend. Thank you so much, Mr. Five Pounder. You can go back to living your life. Oh, this is awesome. This really is the best day of the month. <laughs> Now, as you all know, this is really not my preferred angle of hook set, but it is a buzz bait. So there's not really a need to set the hook all that hard. I can get away with the weak backhand lean as y'all have seen me do. It's now occurring to me that I need a trailer hook on my buzz bait. I don't know why I didn't bring one. That, that one got it at least, but I've had four or five bites now that the fish just couldn't get it because they were slapping at it. Yeah, I see another one. And this guy is luckily not one of them. I was able to land this one. Beautiful, beautiful fish. That one's a little skinnier. This one needs to eat up like his buddies, but still two, two and a half pounder. The head of like a three and a half, but not the body. I have to say, this is not a bad time. I think today could have also been a great day for a black plopper. But guess who doesn't have a black plopper? Me. I don't know where it went. Cool. There's one. Really? Oh, he pulled off. I was not ready for that at all. There we go with a bad lean. Again, just, just, just go the way on the bank that you like to set the hook. That right there for me is not my preferred hook set. And I also was watching the geese. God's a glorious creation. I was not watching my lure. That was on me. Oh gosh! Holy cow! Holy cow! That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one, I think. Oh my gosh, wow. Well, you know what? Not giant, but it's not a dink either. Holy cow, that thing hit it like a freight train. Wow! I thought this fish was so much bigger than three and a half pounds. Oh my gosh! Wow! The way that it hit it and was fighting. Oh my gosh, got my blood going, man. Whew. Oh my gosh. Oh, that thing attacked the buzz bait. That right there is what you live for. The second that stops exciting me is the second I quit this job. There's another one. There's another one. Let's go. Got the old lean on him. See, the lean works if you can get it right. <laughs> I'm just not always the best at the lean. This is awesome. Y'all, I found an absolute honey hole. Oh, ho, ho, ho. and it's not usually this, and I fished here before and it wasn't quite this good. I'm telling you guys, it's because of all that changing weather we're having right now, mixed with the overcast and the rain, these fish get shallow and they go to munching. It's so predictable. It happens all the time. I'm not saying you can't have a bad day in these conditions. You might just be in the wrong area. But if you get in the right area, in these changing weather conditions, whether it's top water, reaction baits, flipping, man, those fish just go bonkers. And it won't last long. As soon as these clouds burn off and that cold front is here, that bite will shut off. So you gotta make hay while it's here. There he is. Oh, boom, baby. Boom, they are loaded on this point right here. That's three fish on this point. Smallest one of the bunch one and a half pounder but thank you friend for eating 
I've lost count of how many fish I've caught today. There's one. Let's go. Oh, finally got to do a, a hook set I like. <laughs> and not a little backwards lean. You have to do a forward lean. Come on. Come on. Bring him up. Bring him up and swing. Let's go, baby. Oh, this is so awesome. See, when you came up the first time, I thought you were an absolute giant. You just got a big head. Skinny personality. Much like most of Los Angeles. Gosh, there's one going back the other way. I knew I wasn't done with that area yet. I thought, you know what, I'll give that back side of the point a little bit of a rest. Making one cast and I got one. Oh, oh, oh. another skit, big head and skinny body right there. Well, actually, you know what? That's a fat one. That's a good healthy two and a half pounder. I'll take that one. And see, you want them to eat it way down there. That's the, that's the way you want. Enough of this little rinky dink slapping at it. I want you to munch it, boys. Oh God, there's one. There's one. Oh yeah, let's go, baby. On the buzz bait. On the buzz bait. Oh, what a good fish to finish on, folks. What a big one. What a big one to finish on. Let's go. Let's go. Oh my gosh. That one can go five. It can go five. Ha 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 ha. Look at that stinking, beautiful buzzbait fish right there, folks. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, what a time. This is the day to go fishing, y'all. Okay, sounds good. I was here a few weeks ago, and somebody told me just to stay. Like one of you guys in the carts told me to stay off the off of the playing area. Yeah. And so they didn't they didn't tell me to leave last time. Oh really? Yeah. They probably weren't supposed to say that because uh, we're, we're like I've worked here for a while. We've never gotcha. really allowed fishing over okay. here. I wish Sounds we good. did. I would come out here and fish. It would be a nice spot. You, you work here, you should. Yeah. No, I'd still get in trouble. <laughs> really? Getting kicked out is no fun, but at least we had fun while it lasted. So that is it everybody. If you made it all the way to the end of the video and you are not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. You guys are the best type of viewer that watch all the way to the end. My heart goes out to you guys. I love y'all. And if this video piqued your interest, you know, talking about weather and how that affects bass fishing success, click up here in this corner. I will have my previous video as I talked about the worst day of the month to go bass fishing. And in that video, I have an awesome special guest, Bassmaster Classic Champion, MLF Angler, Alton Jones, of course, filled with so much good information. And he's got way more knowledge and experience when it comes to weather and how that affects fishing success rates than I ever will. So again, click up here in this corner if that interests you, and we'll see you all next time on TRF.